The NICER instrument, launched by NASA, reveals that neutron stars are not as simple as previously thought. Two independent research teams managed to obtain a realistic assessment of the mass and radius of a neutron star, about 1,000 light-years away from Earth, using data from the NICER X-ray telescope. They also mapped its surface, revealing that the configuration of its magnetic field differs significantly from that predicted by theoretical models. Want to know more? Hi guys, welcome back to Beyond Unknown. Today, we will be taking a look at how scientists discovered what is the surface of a neutron star for the first time. Make sure to stick till the end of this video as we have a lot to cover. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like today's video, it helps us a long way. Pulsars are the universe's lighthouses. These tiny compact objects are neutron stars, which are the remains of once massive stars that spin quickly and emit radiation into space. For the first time, astronomers have meticulously mapped the surface of a 16-mile-wide pulsar. The discovery calls into question astronomers' textbook image of pulsar appearance and opens the door to learning more about these extreme objects. The NICER X-ray telescope was launched into orbit by a SpaceX Dragon spacecraft in June 2017 and installed outside the ISS. The name, which stands for Neutron Star Interior Composition Explorer, is a direct reference to the task that this instrument has been performing for the past two years. NICER observes neutron star X-ray emissions and provides scientists with observational data to calculate the radius and mass of these super-compact stellar remnants. These are critical parameters that scientists use to gain valuable information about the state of matter within neutron stars, whose nuclei reach pressures and densities that no other celestial object accessible to observation can match. The section of NICER that protrudes from the outside of the ISS is shaped like a washing machine with sides measuring about one meter. One side has a grid of 56 round holes, each with a series of concentric mirrors that focus incoming X-rays on the siliceous sensor at the bottom of each hole. The telescope is focused on detecting soft X-rays with energies ranging from 0.2 to 12 keV. It has an unprecedented time resolution of 100 nanoseconds for spectroscopy and arrival time of X-band photons. On December 12, seven studies analyzing the results of a year and a half of NICER observations were published concurrently in the Astrophysical Journal Letters. The researchers concentrated their efforts on one neutron star in particular, the millisecond pulsar PSR J0030 plus 0451, or more colloquially, J0030, chosen for its proximity and exceptional signal stability. J0030 is a star in the constellation Pisces, that is 329 9 parsecs, 1073.29 light years away from Earth. It is an isolated pulsar discovered in 2000 that emits radiation in radio waves, X-rays, and gamma rays. Its pulsations repeat every 4.87 milliseconds, implying that the star rotates 205.53 times per second. Its period, like all pulsars, is subject to a very slight but constant variation, which, in the case of J0030, was calculated to be 1.02 1020 seconds per second. It means that the rotation period increases by 100 billionth of a billionth of a second per second, a variation so small that J0030 and other pulsars could be used to measure time with precision comparable to the best atomic clocks. To fully comprehend what the researchers discovered on this pulsar and how they found it, it is necessary to first fully understand what type of object it is. Neutron stars are formed by the now inert, compact, and ultra-dense cores of progenitor stars that exploded as supernovae, with initial masses ranging from 10 to 30 solar masses. Because this core has a mass greater than the so-called Chandrasekhar limit, the gravitational collapse cannot be stopped by electron degeneracy pressure, as it does in white dwarfs. Gravity compresses matter to the point where electrons and protons merge, resulting in a very dense nuclear pasta. All of the empty spaces within the atoms vanish, and the star finds a new equilibrium thanks to neutron degeneracy pressure, which eventually stops the gravitational collapse. Neutron stars are extremely small bodies with radii of 10 to 13 kilometers and masses ranging from 1.4 to 2.5 solar masses. It is an extremely large amount of matter contained in an extremely small volume. It's as if half a million Earth-sized planets were crammed into a sphere with a radius smaller than the city of Rome. The density at the center of such a compact object is unfathomable. It is estimated to be 5 to 10 times greater than an atomic nucleus saturation density of 2.8-1014 grams per cubic centimeter. 
Bodies that are both small and massive have monstrously intense gravitational fields which must be escaped by traveling at significant fractions of the speed of light. One of the consequences of such strong gravity is that the radiation emitted by the surface of a neutron star is subject to unexpected relativistic phenomena. For example, the light follows such curved paths that the hemisphere hidden from view is also visible for a good portion of the time. Another extreme feature, particularly in young neutron stars, is the high rotation speed, which is caused by the angular momentum conservation of the progenitor star. Even if the progenitor had rotated very slowly, the neutron star that replaces it will inevitably have a much faster rotation speed at birth because its radius is at at least five or six orders of magnitude smaller. The same physical principle that allows an ice skater to increase her rotation speed by simply pulling in her arms is at work here. The magnetic fields of progenitor stars are also inherited by neutron stars, which reach intensities in the billions of Gauss when trapped in the tiny size of such objects. The Earth's magnetic field has a strength of about half a Gauss. A plasma of charged particles accelerated at relativistic speeds pervades the magnetosphere of a neutron star as a result of the strength of its magnetic field. Forced to spiral along the magnetic field lines, these particles emit streams of radiation spanning the electromagnetic spectrum from gamma rays to radio waves. However, the radiation we receive on Earth is emitted not only by the magnetosphere, but also by the surface of a neutron star. Large amounts of charged particles are fired towards the surface of the neutron star by the combined action of magnetic and electric fields, resulting in hotspots with temperatures reaching millions of degrees. They are the hotspots that produce the thermal X-rays detected by the NICER telescope. In summary, a millisecond pulsar, such as J0030, is a rapidly rotating neutron star that emits pulsed radiation, the characteristics of which are determined by the variable and combined effects of rotation, gravity, atmosphere, magnetic field, and object size. As a result, the energy spectrum of the X-band photons received by NICER, combined with the precise timing of their arrival, contains a treasure trove of information on the nature of the neutron star that emitted those photons. A kind of miracle is possible thanks to complex mathematical models and the computing power of modern supercomputers. That endless periodic series of pulsations can be squeezed to make them tell everything they know about the neutron star from which they originate. Not only the rotation period and its variations, but also the radius and mass of the star, the intensity of its magnetic and gravitational fields, and finally, the number, shape, size, and temperature of the hotspots present on its surface. The only risk in such extracting information is that it is heavily based on a priori assumptions, that is, theoretical models based on what astrophysicists have learned so far about neutron stars and the radiation they emit. So in order to reach the most objective conclusions possible, it is necessary to rely on independent research teams that analyze the same observational data using different methods and tools. If, at the end of the work, the results obtained by one of the teams are consistent with those obtained by another, it means that those results are quite likely to be an objective and reliable description of the object they studied, rather than the result of one or more biases caused by flaws in the theoretical models or method errors. Following this principle, two independent research teams examined NICER observations of the Pulsar J0030 between July 24, 2017 and December 9, 2018. NICER has accumulated data related to approximately 400 million rotations of J0030 over the last year and a half, creating a database large enough to attempt to obtain a complete identity card for this neutron star. In any case, research on the Pulsar J0030 has already yielded an intriguing result, the mapping of its surface. Both research teams were able to reconstruct the shape, position, temperature and size of the hotspots on the Pulsar surface by manipulating the X-ray data from J0030 in various ways. Both groups achieved consistent results despite using different methods and tools. Riley's team found out that there are two hotspots on J0030 surface, one roughly circular and spanning a few degrees, and one larger and shaped like a crescent. Both have a temperature of approximately 1.3 million degrees Kelvin and, most surprisingly, are located in the same hemisphere of the neutron star. The most important finding from those two studies is that the classic magnetic field model that theory attributes to pulsars, a dipole with two antipodal magnetic poles equidistant from the center of the star and inclined with respect to the rotation axis, does not correspond to the mapping of J0030's surface performed by the two research groups. The data obtained from NICER observations 
points to a much more complicated magnetic field structure for this pulsar than predicted by theory. For the time being, the best possible interpretation of the data appears to be that of a multipolar global magnetic field, most likely not centered on the geometric center of the neutron star. More research and new observations, however, will be required to better understand and learn more. And that ends our episode. We hope that you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe and leave a comment down below your own thoughts and don't forget to like today's video. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.